just stepped into a time machine and it takes you 10 years into the future. You're wealthy, successful, and you have the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want. But guess what? There are things you don't invest in to grow your wealth. This is what they are. Hi friends, welcome back. In today's video, we're diving deep into the mindset and psychology of the wealthy, especially focusing on six things they choose not to invest in. Stick around till the end for a bonus insight that could change the way you think about money. Let's go. A house. Before you hit that dislike button twice, hear me out. If you're aiming for extreme wealth, a home might not be the best bet. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Why do some people still swear by real estate? While owning a property can provide passive income through rentals, it's not always the best strategy for everyone, especially if you need liquidity for other investments that can make you more money. I used to believe that owning a house was the ultimate investment. This belief was deeply rooted in my upbringing in an Asian American family and societal norms, where home ownership is often cited as the pinnacle of success. My baby boomer parents had a pretty different experience. In Vietnam, they bought homes, but only in cash. So there were no such things as home mortgage loans, no installments back then. So if a home cost you $50,000 and you didn't have the money to buy it, you simply didn't buy it. In the US, home ownership is often seen as the American dream. According to a bank rate study, over 74% of Americans see home ownership as essential for financial stability and measure it as more important than a college degree and a good career. However, the average new home in 2023 costs over $500,000. That $50,000 earlier, which could have secured a home in Vietnam back then, is merely a 10% down payment here. And while experts recommend at least 20% down to avoid PMI, how feasible is that for most people? Owning a home locks up a lot of money for 30 years and can give a false sense of security. That same money could yield a 10% annual return in the S&P 500 compared to real estate that averaged about 3-4% to per year. This becomes crucial if you have a growing business that could benefit from that capital. You can take Ali Abdal, a doctor turned YouTuber. He started an online YouTube channel and online businesses while he was still in medical school. And in just a few years, he was earning over a million dollars annually. Investing in a home would have slowed down his financial growth. Studies have shown that the emotional allure of owning a home can lead to many to become house poor. It's a financial trap that is easy to fall into, but hard to climb out of. Now, you might think, okay, home ownership offers stability, equity, and tax benefit. But consider this. Nearly 40% of Americans can't cover a $400 emergency expense. So how stable is a 30-year mortgage when a single unexpected expense could put your home at risk? Often, early mortgage payments mostly go towards interest, not actually building equity. In fact, for a typical 30-year mortgage, it takes approximately 15 years just to pay down half of the principal amount. That's half the life of the mortgage, mostly going to the lender's pocket, not actually building your wealth. The tax advantages often don't outweigh the potential gains from other investments. According to a study by the Tax Policy Center, the average annual tax savings for homeowners is around 1,918. However, if that money were invested in S&P 500, which has an average annual return of about 10%, it could grow much more over that same period. Contrary to popular belief, renting isn't a waste of money. It can be actually a smarter financial move, especially if you're not planning on house hacking or renting out your property or using them as assets. The potential returns from investments often outweigh the benefits of a mortgage. So if you're aiming to grow your wealth, it might be time to rethink the traditional path of buying a house for yourself. It's not about shunning real estate. It's about making smart, informed decisions with your money at different points of your life and when you have the money to buy. Now that we've unraveled the complexities of home ownership, let's shift gears and talk about another major financial decision many of us face. You've probably heard the saying, a new car loses value the moment it leaves the lot. Well, it's not just a saying, it's a financial reality. A brand new car can depreciate by up to 20% within the first year. The wealthy do differently when it comes to cars. Take Warren Buffett for an example. Despite being one of the richest people in the world, he's known for driving a relatively modest car. Many wealthy individuals prefer used cars and they keep it for as long as possible because that's how you'll be able to reap the sunk cost of car ownership. Why do they make such choices? It's simple. They prefer to invest their money in assets that appreciate over time rather than sinking it into rapidly depreciating items like a new car. So if you must buy a new car, consider models that depreciate lower than the average. So the next time you find yourself enticed by that new car, car smell, pause and consider the long-term financial implications. The wealthy just don't think about the immediate gratification a new car might bring. 
They're playing the long game, the long financial game, focusing on assets that will grow over time. You have high interest debt, especially from sources like credit cards, can be a significant burden that hampers your financial growth. While some forms of debt can be a strategic tool for investment, high interest debt is usually not one of them. With an average credit card APR rate of around 20 to 30%, it's like carrying a big ball and chain that drags your financial potential. If you're burdened by high interest debt, consider the snowball method by Dave Ramsey. The snowball method by Dave Ramsey involves making minimum payments on all debts while focusing extra funds on clearing the smallest debt first. This gains momentum and motivation to tackle the next one. So for more details, check out my video over here. The wealthy prioritize paying off high interest debts quicker or avoiding them altogether. This frees up their income to invest in opportunities that yield higher and positive returns rather than getting them caught up in a debt spiral with exorbitant interest rates. Rather than chasing the latest gadgets or designer brands, the wealthy prioritize value and utility. For an example, Warren Buffett used a flip phone until 2019 because it met his needs. He only switched to a smartphone when he found features that genuinely enhanced his productivity. So before splurging on a trendy item, ask yourself, does this add value to my life? The wealthy invest in durable, functional items, not just a status symbol. In 2021, Americans spent over $105 billion on lottery tickets, with those earning under $30,000 being the most frequent buyers. So why would those that are economically disadvantaged buy lottery tickets? The psychology is simple, the hope for a better future and opportunities. But the wealth understand the odds. 1 in 292 million for the Powerball are not in their favor. Instead of gambling such slim chances, they focus on calculated risks and taking long-term planning to build their wealth. They don't leave their future to chance, they actively shape it. Wealthy individuals don't just invest their money, they invest in financial education. They make it a point to understand various investment options, from stocks to real estate. Their secret, a lifetime commitment to continuous learning. Studies have shown that the average millionaire reads at least 24 books a year focusing on expanding their financial intelligence. High-profile entrepreneurs and billionaires like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Mark Cuban take it even further, reading around 50 books a year. And if you're new to investing, consider starting with books like The Psychology of Money by Morgan Husserl or Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The takeaway is clear. Financial intelligence is key to making informed investment decisions. By investing in your education, the wealthy ensure that their financial choices are more likely to yield long-term security and growth. In today's video, we've unpacked crucial financial pitfalls to steer clear of. From the hidden costs of home ownership, to rapid depreciation of new cars, and the value of financial education. Remember, the wealthy invest not just in assets, but also in their financial literacy. Here's a bonus insight. True wealth building is about making informed decision making, not just following the crowd. As Warren Buffett wisely said, the rich invest in time, the poor invest in money. The wealthy prioritize continuous learning to make smarter, more effective choices and play the long game. So be patient and keep putting in the effort to learn more and apply that knowledge. If you're on the path to financial independence, these strategies are worth considering. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe for more. You can also check out my next video here on the time value of money, what the rich don't want you to know. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.